James Preston. I'm an actor with zero gravity management. I'm too, I'm too far gone. I, but that man stole my life away from me. I think it's only fair that I took his. Hollywood will never change. Oh, well, if I don't make it on my talent alone, I don't want to make it at all. I got started in acting when I was about 13 years old. I went to a Model Search America, and we ended up in New York, and I did a lot of modeling for the summer. I did a commercial, and I was like, yeah, don't want to model. Definitely want to act. I, I found that I could give more self-expression and it made me a lot more fulfilled. One more nation again. Someday. Someday. God bless you. And may God bless I was extremely blessed to stumble upon Teresa Bell. And Teresa Bell was an actress, but also an acting coach that came out of LA. We were studying scripts that had depth and really amazing character studies at a very young age, start to develop skills as an adult actor. I ended up getting this chance to audition for a film called Midnight Clear that was coming to town in Dallas. I booked the role and I got a SAG voucher for the first time, you know, at the age of 15. Then I realized, I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna definitely pursue acting. Eighteen, turning 19, I moved out to Los Angeles. I find value in all the roles, just in, in like separate parts. First feature film I did, it's called Joshua Tree, 1951, Portrait of James Dean. It's the first time I got to really, really dive into who somebody is not on the surface, really understanding what internal struggles made this person tick. And, and that was a really, really cool experience, something bigger than I had done before. And also the Gates was really cool. I played a werewolf, which was really awesome. It was a lot of fun. I got to play this character in a short film called Woodland Heights by the director Samuel Gonzalez Jr. And I love working with him. And we brought back the 50s, which is great. It's the story of the hook. I worked alongside an amazing actress and we got to kind of like riff back and forth. We're both able to be extremely creative together. If you don't like the research of acting, you shouldn't be acting because it's 90% research. The other 10% is letting it go and trusting that you understand and, and letting it all come to life. As an actor, you have to be an observer of all things and understand how people move and talk and, and how they respond. In 2012, I contracted botulism. It's a neurotoxin. It became extremely severe. I was put in a medically induced coma for a week and then on life support for a month. I had to learn to walk and talk again to reevaluate my life and reevaluate what it is that I really want. I decided that I still wanted to be an actor. It was really difficult when you don't have memories of the past. You don't really have an identity. You don't have a personality. I went from, you know, studying acting for 13 years and then coming out to LA and within seven months booking a big show on ABC and then playing James Dean to literally everything stopped. Because of my notoriety in the beginning, I was put into big rooms with directors coming out of botulism and these directors are expecting me to be the actor that I was. Well, I was just learning how to breathe and talk at the same time. I didn't want to be left behind. I'd be reading and just completely stop breathing. My mind wasn't working with my lungs. I get, you know, feedback that I'm, that I'm just, I'm too green. And it's just like, I literally had just come off a show and come off doing a feature film. And it just was awful. My mom told me one day, I was just like, I called her and she told me, you're never gonna find who you were. So start living for who you wanna be. And this completely changed my life. It opened up uh, the possibilities of what I can accomplish now, given the, the horrible situation that just happened and, and w the state it left me in, but where can I go from here? I started studying who I wanted to be. I would say that I was in a rush to experience life through this recovery. The recovery was six years. It was an awful long time. I realized that I need to go and relearn how to act. He didn't attack your girlfriend, then who did? Who attacked your girlfriend? Who did it? This is my professional self-taping setup. We've got a background, it's good for my eyes. It's just from Joanne's fabric. It's a pretty thick blue fabric, LED light, got a soft box. It all goes together really easily. Also, the great thing about this setup is it's portable and tripod. Let's put it together. All these items are relatively inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon, but it completely changes everything about a self-tape audition. This tripod is like 20 bucks, it's super cheap. 
And iPhones are great because you can upload them immediately. And then the only other thing I'm missing is a reader. I got to start from ground zero again and all the bad habits that I had prior to this accident, I was able to get rid of them. I was able to create new good habits and I was able to fall in love with the craft again, I've become like a, a huge fan of acting. Whereas before I wasn't because I was just like, well, I can act, you know, I've always I've been doing it for so long that I was able to get into a room and present a character. But now I, I actually love what I'm doing. I don't think that would have been possible without going through botulism. I think acting and, and filmmaking can change the world really. And it can definitely change people and it can allow people to tell their stories. I think I have a more of an understanding of why filmmakers are the way they are. Let's talk about auditioning in general. I'm gonna give a list like three different um, steps that I would take um, as an actor that I think a lot of people forget about. Whenever you approach the scene, what I do first is I read it with the direction completely and then tend to forget about the direction unless it has something to do with where I'm going blocking wise. Allow yourself to be loose and uh, if you have a itch on the top of your head or you know whatever, don't cut it. That's probably the most human you're gonna be in the scene. The other thing is the environment. Environment is so important and it, it definitely distinguishes like good actors from great actors. The advice I would give a young person to explore the craft and go for it. We have an amazing outlet. We have cell phones. You can make films, you can act out different scenes. You could take a film that you really love, start out by interpreting what the other actor is doing. Also be confident, be you. There's only one you and that's what people are looking for. joining us on this week's episode of Stay Creative. It was so fun getting to hang out with James and learn how to act today. Any last advice? Yeah, you guys just be yourself, enjoy what you're doing, stay creative. I always feel like I'm getting ready for like a school picture. <laughs> You, you almost got it. What? Oh, it's a pretty butterfly. And other things and stuff. <laughs> oh, so on this week's episode. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, that was a one. Do it again. There you go. I did it. Nice. <laughs>